Hi all, I am Paresh Naik, ENT Surgeon and we are back with our second episode of Neck Muscles. We will start with the next group of neck muscles, the suprahyoid and the infrahyoid. So, where are we? Before that, please do not forget to subscribe for more informative videos. Now, we are looking at this area. These are the suprahyoid muscles. Suprahyoid, that is above the hyoid. This is the hyoid bone. So immediately, let's think, what will the muscle do? Every muscle has its own action. And this will elevate the hyoid bone. That will in turn lift the larynx. The larynx, it will lift it. Imagine the muscle contracts hyoid gets elevated and that will also lift the larynx which will in turn cause closing of the epiglottis okay it gets lifted larynx lifted and the epiglottis will close the laryngeal inlet now going back to muscles let's start with the suprahyoid muscles these are digastric muscle Mylohyoid muscle, geniohyoid, and stylohyoid. We will look at digastric muscle. Digastric, that is, di is two. So it has got two bellies. You can see one, and this is the other one. Okay, this app allows us to understand in details every muscle and its relation to the other no anatomical structure. So, as you can see, the muscle is composed of anterior belly and the posterior belly and they're joined together with the intermediate tendon. So this looks like a V and the intermediate tendon represents a common point of insertion. The digastric muscle is a small muscle which is situated just under the mandible that extends from the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Here, can you see here? Okay, now the posterior belly arises from the medial surface of the mastoid notch. The intermediate tendon is a fibrous sling that is anchored to the superior aspect of the body of hyoid. This is very delicate and you know that's why we keep on saying the anatomy of neck is very um, compact. Every muscle it has its own function and together they produce a different range of movement. And it's just not about uh, motor movement, but also it helps in swallowing, then breathing. The digastric has got two bellies as mentioned and also it will have dual supply. The anterior belly, which arises from the digastric fossa of the lower mandible, it is supplied by nerve to mylohyoid, a branch of inferior alveolar nerve, which will come over here. That in turn is a branch of mandibular nerve, which arises from the trigeminal. Okay. And the posterior belly receives innervation from the digastric muscle. I beg your pardon. It receives uh, innervation from the digastric branch of the facial nerve. So that's your digastric muscle. Muscle. So the digastric muscle and in general all the suprahyoid muscles, I'll keep on repeating, they have a common function. They help during swallowing, chewing, then speech. They also help uh, in elevation of the hyoid bone as mentioned before and pulls the mandible down which opens the jaw. Okay, by contracting. This will happen when the hyoid is fixed. So let's see our second muscle, mylohyoid. I know these muscles are slightly boring, but we don't have an option, do we really? So the mylohyoid is a... Where did it go? Here, the green thing. It's like a sheet. And it actually covers the majority of the floor of the mouth. So if we try to open this person's mandible, 
uh, which is difficult for me to open. But uh, what you will see is underneath the tongue, you will have this thing covered, this muscle covered. So the mylohyoid, it arises from the mylohyoid line. This is the line under the mandible over there on the inner surface of the mandible. And it inserts on the, where did, does it insert? It inserts over here on the mylohyoid raphae and the superior aspect of the body of the hyoid bone. Quite simple, starts from here, ends over here. When it contracts, it will lift this up. If this is stable and if it contracts, this will open up. It's now supply, pretty simple, inferior alveolar nerve, which is a branch of mandibular nerve, again trigeminal. Same that as of antidiagastric. So this is the antidiagastric, same nerve supply, this is also same nerve supply. So the next muscle is the geniohyoid. This is hidden well inside. So this is a very short muscle that arises from the inferior meatal spine over here and it runs posterior inferiorly and it inserts on the superior border of the hyoid bone. So we saw the anterior digastric muscle, then we saw the mylohyoid and now we have the geniohyoid. It is supplied by C1 via the hypoglossal nerve, very straightforward simple bone. Again, when mandible is fixed, the muscle helps in elevating the hyoid bone. You know, all these muscles we have to release while doing laryngectomy. You know, as a step, uh, one of the steps of laryngectomies, we have to clear the superior border and free the hyoid. The last muscle, stylohyoid. Where are you? Look at this. The purple color, lavender, lilac. I don't understand the differences, but yeah, something related to that shade. This is the stylohyoid. Stylo hyoid. Okay. They are very easily named from one part to the other part. The stylohyoid is a very thin muscle that extends from the temporal and to the hyoid, as you can see. It originates from the posterior surface of the styloid process of the temporal bone, passes anterior inferiorly, that is going front and down, and is attached on the body of hyoid. It is supplied by the facial nerve, seven nerve. Its action, so as per the all suprahyoid muscles, uh, they elevate the hyoid bone, and I'll keep on repeating this because that is their genuine function that will help in closing the epiglottis, opening the mouth and deglutition and swallowing. Thank you for listening. Hope you like these videos. Please like, subscribe and suggest. We are going to continue with our paranasal sinus videos and also some radiology videos coming soon. See you.